Hi, this is Dr. A with a clinical chemistry review video on the endocrine system. We're going to look at the hypothalamic pituitary units. So, um, also the pituitary can also uh, be called a hypothesis. So, a hypothalamic hypophyseal unit can also be used. Um, so, the hypothalamus is located at the base of the brain. So, in this little green area right here, highlights hypothalamus. The main function is to maintain homeostasis. It re receives input from many body systems to maintain a steady state. The endocrine and nervous systems integrate to control homeostasis. Um, the hypothalamic response patterns are uh, similar for each specific pituitary hormone. So whatever response pattern is going to be, for example, for the thyroid, it's always that. So for the thyroid, for example, it would be an uh, open loop negative feedback system, and that's just what governs it. Uh, but if it has a pulsatile system like growth hormone, then that's what's going to govern it. And so it's very, it's steady and it's very specific. Um, so they are often uh, the most common um, type of uh, uh, feedback response pattern is the open loop feedback negative system. Uh, you can also have pulsatility, so growth hormone is one of them where it just releases it every so often on a certain pattern, and then you can have cyclicity. Uh, so those hormones that are secreted on a cycle, uh, one of the probably most obvious ones is going to be the monthly cycle of uh, female repro reproduction, so the cycle of the hormones like the estrogens and the progesterone that lead to uh, the menstruation and all of that. Uh, the hypothalamic hormones, uh, there are peptides and bioactive um, amines that are the most common products of the uh, hypothalamus. They are often called releasing hormones or inhibiting hormones, um, and they often have multiple actions. So, for example, TRH, so thyrotropin releasing hormone, can stimulate the secretion of both TSH and prolactin. GnRH, which is gonadotropin releasing hormone, can stimulate both LH and FSH, which is luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone production. Somatostatin can inhibit growth hormone and TSH release from the pituitary. And vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone, also they kind of often use it interchangeably, uh, can stimulate water metabolism and adenocorticotropic hormone secretion. The pituitary is often called the master gland. It secretes hormones that regulate other glands, such as the thyroid, adrenals, and gonads. It is located in a pocket of sphenoid bone here, uh, surrounded by dura mater, so it's located here in the orange. Um, it releases hormones in response to hormones that are released from the hypothalamus or in response to nerve impulses from the hypothalamus. Uh, it is divided into anterior and posterior pituitary. So the anterior pituitary actually releases, re, will respond to those hormones that are released from the hypothalamus. The posterior pituitary are going to respond, is going to respond to nerve impulses from the hypothalamus. The infundibulum is the stalk that connects it to the hypothalamus. So it's like right here. And the pituitary functions via several mechanisms. So feedback loops, there are both negative and positive feedback loops. Pulsatile secretions, um, so they're secreted um, in in patterns, but just every so often. Diurnal rhythms, so day-night rhythms, so there are certain hormones that are higher in the day, lower at night, or lower at night, higher in the day, so that would be a diurnal, diurnal rhythm. And also environmental influence, so things like, uh, let's say if you get dehydrated, uh, that could affect some of the release of hormones, like antidiuretic hormone. Feed, let's talk about feedback loops since we've mentioned them. Um, there are two types of feedback loops, the negative feedback loop and the positive feedback loop. So the the idea of the negative feedback loop is it lessens the change away from normal. And it is the most common, almost every hormone is regulated by this negative feedback loop. And so uh, in this diagram, like here, you have a set level that's represented by the yellow line here. And with a negative feedback loop, it, so if it has increased some um, above the, the set point, then production will decrease so that the levels will drop back down uh, close to, to the normal levels. But then, of course, if it drops below normal uh, the set point, then the hormone production will increase to bring it back up. And so um, 
they lessen the change away from normal. So this is normal, so it tries to bring it back down to normal or bring it back up to normal. Um, negative feedback loops are very much akin to a thermostat. So if you had it set, for example, here on 72, um, if we were during the summer and it was getting hot, temperature in the house would increase and then the uh, AC would kick in and bring the temperature in the house back down to the set point which is 72 but then in the winter time the temperature in the house would drop but then the heat would kick in and bring the temperature in the house back up to the set point 72. So a lot of our hormones are, are in control by this feedback loop type of pattern. So you get cycles of secretion that maintain physiological and homeostatic control in these cycles. So this type of cycle like that can uh, range from hours to months in duration. Uh, and thyroid production is an example of a negative feedback loop. And I'll go into detail with this in just a second. A positive feedback loop it just increases the change away from normal. So this basically goes up, 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 up. So it's often akin to opening up a faucet. Uh, labor in the labor hormones uh, are some of the ones that will be positive feedback. So um, the release uh, triggers more release and more release until basically the baby is born. Clotting is another one that's a positive feedback loop. So example of a negative feedback loop. So you have dehypothalamus produces thyrotropin releasing hormone which swims over to the anterior pituitary, stimulates it to release thyroid stimulating hormone, which then swims over to the thyroid and stimulates the thyroid to release thyroxine. So, and then, well, T4 and also T3, but then, so it, let's say it just releases thyroxine, then the levels of thyroxine in the blood will increase and that will inhibit the pituitary from releasing more TSH and the hypothalamus from uh, releasing more TRH. But then as the thyroxine levels drop, then it's no longer inhibited and then the hypothalamus can secrete TRH again and the pituitary can secrete CSH. So just kind of this tug and pull, uh, push and pull kind of thing where it's going up and down and up and down and in a cycle. A little bit about hypopituitarism. So um, you can have the failure of either pituitary or hypothalamus um, and it will result in a loss of anterior pituitary functions. Um, such as pan hypopituitarism is complete loss of function of all the hormones that are produced by the pituitary. Um, a monotropic hormone deficiency, it would be the loss of a single hormone or single uh, capacity, like uh, just a thyroid or just a growth hormone or, um, you know, just the sex hormones and stuff like that. And they are obviously hypopituitarism is associated with low or normal levels of the tropic hormones. Both tropic and target hormone levels should be measured when there is any suspicion of pituitary failure. So we get, so for example, in for the thyroid, you would want to to measure thyroxine T3 and T4 and all that, but you would also want to measure TSH and TRH. So um, being, you know, TSH, TRH, TRH especially is a tropic, thyrotropic releasing hormone. If uh, one secondary deficiency is documented, then you want to search for other deficiency states and put potentially the cause for pituitary, pituitary failure. So some of the causes um, are uh, pituitary, paracellular, metastatic, and hypothalamic tumors, postpartum ischemic necrosis of the pituitary, infiltrative diseases such as hemochromatosis, sarcoidosis, and histiocytosis, Fungal infections, tuberculosis, syphilis, um, lymphocytic hypophysitis, severe head trauma, pituitary surgery, and radiotherapy. My brother actually had severe head trauma and he lost some of the pituitary hormone functions, um, especially adenocorticotropic hormone and um, antidiuretic hormone. Uh, the treatment then is uh, usually the replacement of the hormone that's not being produced. So for example, it could be thyroxine, glucocorticoids, or the gender-specific sex, sex steroids. And that is it for this little unit. Thank you.